my name is Catlin Moore. I'm the programs manager. Yay. There you go. <laughs> at the Beale Center for Art and Technology at UC Irvine. So we're one of the more relatively new laser talk hosts. Um, I would say that as far as best practices goes, we've really distilled it down to three primary areas that we try to put a large focus on. Um, the first of which is nine times out of 10, the uh, laser talks will stem from a common concept that we host through an exhibition at the Beale Center for Art and Technology. So that usually provides an anchor point for a lot of the conversation and the people that we choose to invite. It also gives the audience members an opportunity to to actually physically participate in something outside of the laser talk itself. So a lot of them will choose to come through the exhibition first as a way to familiarize themselves with some of the topics and then go to the talk itself. Um, the second uh, best practices point that I feel is really important is establishing really solid community partnerships, um, both on a long-term basis. In our case, that would be the Laguna Art Museum is our museum partner um, and UCI Applied Innovation is our venue partner. Um, but for each event in particular with a specific theme in mind, we also seek additional community partnerships both on and off campus to help either cross promote the event or make suggestions for guest speakers for the event. Um, the laser talk that was actually mentioned previously with the artist castles and a few other people um, was actually a great example of that because we were able to work with the Orange County LGBTQI Center as well as the one on campus. Um, and use some of the avenues that the artists themselves or representatives from that community had access to to really broaden the audience range of the event itself. Um, another uh, point that we try to make really important is just accessibility of information on online. I know that uh, the Zurich folks had mentioned having a website, so that's kind of in the same vein and a great idea. Um, we're very lucky in that we have a website for the Beale Center that kind of houses a lot of that information but we also make sure that it's posted on UCI Today, any kind of social media outlet, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Um, and then we try to provide hashtags and content to all of our community partners as well so that they can further disseminate that information on our behalf. So those would be my top three best practices. David, do you have anything to add? No, that's good. Okay. And can you say how many people typically show up for yours? I would say, as is typical with a lot of on-campus events, I'm sure other universities have a similar experience. We always sell out. Um, we have about 150 people register per event. Of that, I would say maybe half show up. Um, on average, it's about 60 people, more or less. Um, which for us is actually pretty good, <laughs> um, especially considering that we try to host them as was suggested originally on the same kind of Monday nights at a certain time at a certain place. Um, so Monday night at 530, we can be up against some other competition between dinner and Monday night football and a lot of other things. So, um, but yeah, I would say anywhere from 40 to 80 people, just depending on the content. Um, again, that Castles talk was one of our higher attended events was actually closer to about 80, 85, just because we had Zachary Drucker, who's involved in producing the television show Transparent and a few other uh, artists that had bigger household names, so to speak. Um, and the laser talk that we just had a few weeks ago is a little bit more intimate at about 30 people. So it really just depends on the nature of the content as well. And we're very lucky in that our venue partner has multiple rooms of varying sizes that we can use to accommodate those things um, pretty much on a whim. And is it mostly students? Um, I would say it's it about half and half. Um, from what I've been able to tell in tracking our attendance, about half people of the audience members come from on campus, uh, quite a few of which are students, both undergraduate and graduate. Um, and then about half of our guests actually come from off campus, which is great, um, especially for UCI, which is such a big commuter school. Um, we are really trying to make additional inroads through community partnerships. So identifying people off campus that may have an interest in the subject matter. Um, so yeah, I would say it's about a split. Does anybody else want to comment on what Caitlin said or add to or Okay. What would you Hopefully say? That Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. I think somebody on the, I think Jill, I think Jill might want to speak, so you're going to have to. Jill, did you want to speak? I just want to ask a question. I just want to ask a question. Um, what's the ratio of artists to scientists in your audience, do you think?
Can you hear me? Probably get a pretty even split there too. We get a lot um, of general public too. We get a lot of general interest. Um, I would say that um, again, it really highly depends on the subject matter of the laser talk. I, the, for this year, for example, uh, the first laser talk we had was called "Drawn from a Score," which is the same title as the exhibition that we're hosting, but also deals quite a bit with the way that artists or researchers or scientists use the idea of scores or compositions in their work, whether that's computational, database, or music-based. Mm -hmm. So for that one, we got a fair number of people from the arts, just given the nature of the topic. Um, whereas the laser talk will have two talks from now is called "The Art of Conservation." Um, and given that we'll actually have a lot of people that come from the conservation sciences and um, environmental sciences, but have an arts angle to it um, to discuss the various ways that people are using that kind of content in their work. So um, it's it's a really eclectic group, actually. Mm -hmm. Good.